Well, welcome. <clears throat> Tonight we're going to hollow ribs. And I'll show you the easiest way to do it. Shift, what's the news layout? Huh. News layout. Okay. Whatever that is. Anyway. Let's see. We got uh, one watcher, two watchers. Uh, yep, we're up and going on that end. Okay. <clears throat> I had, uh, I got four more of these to, to cut out, but we're gonna, we're gonna, sh I'm gonna show you how I hollow them out. I get myself some brass tubing. It's not a big mystery. Cut a hole in it. The natives are restless next door. And just attach it together. I'm not exactly sure why you guys like watching me do this because it's rather boring, but. And that's how it comes out. Just like it came from the factory that way. Seven watchers. And how you how you get these sharp is you just take your exacto knife and skive the inside of it. This tube's a little long, but I'm not gonna cut it. Does this save any weight? You know, if I took all these scraps and put it on the scale, it probably wouldn't even register. But it gets you thinking that, you know, it's, it's got to save something. Air weighs less than. Here we go on this one. And just to keep it looking uniform and straight, I draw a line on it. I wonder what happened on a plastic ruler. Gotta be here somewhere. Probably under this crap here. I guess I can use this piece of balsa instead of that metal ruler. As it dropped on the floor. I already put the brace on a few of these, so I gotta do this kind of upside down. Just have a piece of wood cut to the right length to, so that they're all pretty uniform. You don't have to. You don't have to do it this way. You don't have to hollow them at all. And I've done it where I haven't even hollowed them at all. I can't tell the difference to be honest with you. Yeah, 
but if you're going to build light airplanes you got to take every precaution Did another thing that's new, new for my, for this build that I don't normally do. I'll show you. I just thought it might help out a little. So when you hit the ground and you're in front of me, I go, ah, look at that. <laughs> That's pretty quick. I built this. I'm doing my landing gear a little different, a little lighter. This is a 332nd balsa wood sandwiched between two pieces of 64th then I glued this box I glued my 3 16 shear web in before I've done anything I'm gonna go ahead and put the platforms in this usually I do it after the wings built but I'm gonna do it before so that I can get a good strong bond on that tang right there and uh, I think that's gonna work out real good Now, I was going to build a foam wing for this airplane, or you know, foam leading edge, but it's such a pain. And you know, I got to go over to John's and back and forth, back and forth. We already blocked out the things. I mean, I still could, I could just cut the front of the wing off and glue it up to the spar, but it's just as easy for me to go ahead and build it this way, and I know what it's going to weigh that way. And, because I'm giving up anywhere between a half ounce and an ounce with the foam leading edge. However, it does look nice, but I'm really not in this for looks. I, I'd, I'd like it to perform well. So, let's do another rib here. got these little uh, tailings too. Don't forget these tailing pieces that go in between the ribs on the trailing edge. And don't forget the shear webbing on the trailing edge. And don't forget to, if you're using my hinge, hinges, don't forget to, or any hinges actually, because the trailing edge is only 3 16 don't forget to put hinge blocks in there. Good evening. Hey Jim. Been out of pocket. Picked up the programs. Missed. Out of pocket. I don't understand that. Finally getting some rain. Slightly cooler temps here in the North Texas. Well, we always have rain here. Like a never ending deal. This thing is dull. It's going to be dull now. Need to put some tape on there. This is really sharp. I have my hand tore up before I get this done.
Yeah, I haven't seen you on in a while, Jim. I kind of missed you. That should help a little. What I've done for this is I've taped the end of it and put a little piece of sandpaper on there so you can grip it. They make a tool just for making holes, but, or you can make your own out of conduit or whatever. The problem is they're so thick walled it mashes the balsa wood. So I've, I've kind of found that. But the tubing works the best. Theoretically, I could put this wing together tonight, but I doubt I get that far. Good evening, Gary. Hello, everybody. Now, another thing that I do that I'll show you is I sew the wing with Kevlar thread doesn't weigh anything and it makes it extremely rigid. You go up and down, up and down, up and down, this way then back and it, and it X's. Makes it really strong. But how strong does it need to be? Can't hurt, don't add no weight. And you can't break it. You will cut your hand off before you break that thread. Ah! The grain caught that knife and pulling it all over the place. Oh well. Fortunately, it ain't a beauty contest inside. It's Needs to be light. You can hollow these. You stream the programs. Yeah, you stream the programs. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about, Jim. Don't matter, I'm still here for now. I'm still here for now. Okay, so we don't have a have a uh, piece on that. That's good. A stiffener. Got to make sure to get the stiffener on there too. Good. Yeah, I get you a three-quarter piece of brass or five-eighths. Seven eighths, if you got it, whatever, ever how big a holes you want to make.
clean out the brass. You get about that many on there. Then you gotta clean it out. Ah, I did have that thing on there. Oh well. We'll do it this way. Now, I'm going to show you this piece. You know, I, I see all the time on stunt hire. Can I leave this off? Can, you know, I've left more parts off airplanes than anybody, I believe. But there's certain things that you got to have on there that absolutely need to be there. The shear webbing on the trailing edge. The shear webbing, at least to the landing gear, on the wing unless it's a D2 wing then it goes all the way and you must have the anti-crush sticks you know we're trying to build light airplanes so you're using the lightest wood possible you have to have that stick on there you absolutely have to have that stick between the two between the two spars that keeps it from crushing because the grain is running this way and that gives you strength forward to aft but you got to have up and down so don't forget that piece very important Here we go. See, there's no stiffener there. And that goes towards the inside, because if you put it towards the outside, then it interferes with the wing tip. Mark your ribs with the tops. All the letters go to the top so that you know how it goes in there because these are beveled at an angle. That way everything fits in perfect. You turn it backwards, it don't fit where the crap. I mean, it's not a disaster, but in the heat of the summer, it'll definitely show up. Natives are restless. I need my 
Gina scale is what I mean. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Because you only got one drawer to work out of, so. Ain't no way you can keep all that shit organized in one drawer. Come on. There it is. There it is. So we got three hours, well, two and a half hours in this wing now. So we'll say that uh, it takes ten hours to build one because we still got to mold some leading edge material. Let's see here. We need this piece. This piece is that piece. So we can. Uh, Zip out one stick out of this. Get one stick out of that. This goes up, this goes on this side. Of course the glue bottle's clogged. Wouldn't have it any other way. You know what, let's put a new tip on that. Wouldn't have it any other way. Bob Hunt compares this to wok cooking. You prepare all the shit and then throw it, in, <laughs> throw it in the wok and cook it. You're done. That's basically what we got here. It it goes pretty fast, you know. I usually, while I'm doing this, I'll watch TV or listen to TV and cut ribs. You don't even know what's going on, really. I mean, it just goes real quick. Man, there's something wrong with my back.
Must be boring watching this. Has to be. Wonder where Steve Fitton is. I haven't seen him on in a while. He must be teaching the kids science stuff. Teach the kids that sodium and water don't mix. Things go boom. You don't do that uh, brace on the center because the, the left center and the right center get glued together flat and then they get cut out. And when I do the center rib I normally only make the cut like this because we're going to lose it for the bell crank. When I do the center rib Normally just do it like this. With no brace. because this all gets cut away after it's glued together. <clears throat> this is bell crank clearance here and then it gets after the wings glued together it gets cut right straight down from there down to there and on a trailing edge gets cut down to there and this all goes away. And it's basically the same with the center rib, or the R1 rib, I do the same way. Watch the last two recordings. Why the angled ribs? That's a good question. Let me explain it to you. It takes less ribs to be twice as rigid if they're at an angle. And they're at opposite angles, so these go this way, you know they're going opposite directions. If you had straight ribs it takes twice as many to be half as strong. If that makes sense. And if I could do it point to point like an egg crate where this rib crossed that rib it would even be stronger. If you look at the free flight guys they run egg crate wings uh, or they cross in two places. This would this rib would cross here and here 
and then that rib would cross these cross this one and that one so half as strong with twice as many ribs if they're straight it's called Warren truss just why is a bridge truss at an angle instead of straight up and down I'm just a backyard engineer don't listen to me listen to aerospace guys they know what they're talking about my engineering expertise is yeah that looks about right <laughs> I don't go by I don't go by percentages I've been building these things almost 60 years and I just know what works you know I this this number works with that number so on and so forth I've tried all different combinations of all different things we're gonna try a crazy combination just because Bob Hunt talked me into it I have I have a particular problem with this airplane that I've explained And he's assured me that it will make no difference so we're going to try it again even though I know it is going to feel weird I have to have a tank that sits back into the wing twice as far as normal so I'm going to design this bell crank control system to set back the tank to set back in the wing and wherever it lies is where it lies and you, normally my bell crank mounts at the high part of the wing so that the front lead out goes right down the front line of the, the ring wing behind the spar. He's told me that Billy has had airplanes that the bell crank was behind the spar and the lead outs run to the wing tip moving forward. That doesn't sound like a good idea to me, but I'm going to do whatever it takes to get this short nose and the tank far enough back in so I don't have to use any crazy handmade tank I can buy an off-the-shelf tank if I ha if I want to so, you know I gotta have seven and a half ounces so I gotta have at least seven and a half ounces behind uh, seven and a half inches behind the engine to the F1 and that's not a problem if you got a 11 inch nose but I want a 9 inch nose 9 and, nine and 3 quarters or 9 and a half because the rigmarole the engine's so damn heavy however I did weigh it out it is lighter than a super tiger if you if you uh, if you take a super tiger I don't know about my ABC motors but if you take a Super Tiger 60 and weigh it against a PA 65, the 65 is two tenths lighter than a Super Tiger 60. However, you have to add ounce and a half header, two ounce pipe, more fuel. I mean, a lot of things to factor in. You just don't look at the iron. You look at the whole package what what am I gonna have to get in there I just put these marks on here so I know where these holes go this kinda keeps all the holes lined up and then I just eyeball you know the distance here here and here close enough it, it's covered so and this type of building is called geodesic and unless you got a computer there's not any really way to plot it unless you do it the lost foam way I 
suppose you could I suppose if a guy wanted to make a real complex rib set you could take ever how thick this is let's say it's two and a quarter two and a quarter inch straight pieces of wood the distance of the root and the distance of the tip two and a quarter and set your ribs in there ever how you want if you want them cross this way that way have a plywood or phenolic rib template on the out in the inboard and the outboard side and then sand them all together after the ribs are all laid out you could sand them all together that would be a lot of work but it could be done probably wouldn't take more than an evening to sand them out but you really want to work that hard at this So we got three hours aside. That's six hours, but I'm doing the talking, so I'd say two hours. Side of four, five, six. I'd say you could build this wing in eight hours, no problem. If you, if you didn't stream and you, you got busy and did everything, just sat down and did it one day Yeah, that's th those are uh, egg crate or uh, geodesic wings. This is Warren Truss, and the wings you're talking about are geodesic or egg crate. I have a uh, three-axis laser cutter that I bought two years ago. It's sitting over John's. I ain't smart enough to run it. So I gotta take it to the Almoff boys to have them figure it out so I can run it. Because it takes something called G code, which is the stupidest thing I ever run across. And there's not enough, I don't have enough life left to learn all these programs, so I ain't even bothering. I taught myself C++ and HTML and PHP. I'm not teaching myself another language. Okay, two more to go, and then we can... Yeah, I got 11... 14 minutes, probably get them done in 14 minutes. Let's see, we want to do what with this rib here? I guess, uh, I guess we can do that long ass thing with this because this the bell crank's gonna swing over here. Yeah, okay, talking to myself.
Yeah, well, I don't understand it. You know, I understand about X, Y, and Z axis, but it sure don't make it don't make sense to me. Of course, I really didn't I really didn't dick with it too much. I just got frustrated and said, "I'm done." What I want is a program like Tinkercad that I can Tinkercad something in, you know, some type of free CAD program, maybe like Blender or whatever. And whatever I draw on screen should come out of the, uh, the laser cutter. But ain't how it works. And I don't think that my laser cutter reads the same codes because the laser cutter is set in metric and I know I don't like metric. I don't want to deal with metric. I want to deal with where it is standard. No, not Wentworth. Uh, American standard. Yeah, uh, we don't. Uh, yeah, John and I play. I I cut a circle with it. And because that's what I got it for to cut my hinges. It's a three axis router and a 15 watt laser. And if, if I could figure out how to, you know, use a drawing program to write an SVG file or whatever, like my, my plotter, my, my uh, sign plotter. The sign plotter works perfect. You just draw up what you want and hit print and psh, out it comes this other thing you know all kind of stupid stuff so I ain't bothered with it I've had it two years and we played with it ten minutes <laughs> it's not worth it So I talked to the Almoff boys, they're 14, 15 years old, they have a 3D printer, they understand the G-code. This winter I'm going to tote it over their house, they're going to play with it, call me up, I'm going to go back, and they're going to show me how to use it. Did you know, did you cut the foam the same way you normally cut the hot wire foam wing? Yes. And then you plot it out and slice it off. It makes a, you know, makes a sausage. You sand the balsa wood to these shapes and then really simple. Like I said, you know, if, if I understand CAD better, if I did what John uh, Miller does, and he can do, do a, an end rib and a root rib, a tip rib and a root rib, and tell how, how many ribs he wants between and at what angle, and hit print, and it goes, and it makes them all for him. But I, I don't know how to do that. I'm just, I'm just not going to bother with trying to learn all that stuff just too much. There's only so much time in a day if I want to build. By the time, let me tell you what I found. Well, I'll sell it to you if I can't figure it out. 
Um, what I have found in my life building these airplanes, by the time I figure out how to use it, I could have made the product and been flying the airplane. <laughs> so it's just a lot easier just to do it. I'm a pretty good artist. I can draw a portrait and it looks relatively close. I mean, I'm not Da Vinci or anything. I could draw an air, whatever I want to draw, I can draw. And if I sat down and really started drawing every day again, it'd be okay. I can paint a sign, I could pinstripe a motorcycle tank, gold leaf, do whatever I want to do. Anyway. I have found that, yeah, you can draw it on CAD, but I can draw it up a thousand times faster than you can get the machine fired up. I'll have it drawn out before the computer's turned on. So why do I want to bother with all that? When I was in the Navy, they taught us stroke and width and how the letters were laid out. And by the time that I turned my computer on, let's say I have a small book, by the time I turn the computer, I can draw that out with a stroke bar faster than the program can unwind. So it's 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 bullshit. <laughs> so. like these ribs here yeah if I had a you know laser cutter or whatever they'd be cut already but shit it would take me a month to get the program laid out so by the time that I figure out the program I'll have these this wing built in the air if I didn't have to talk and do all this stuff it'd be twice as fast Yeah, I can make false teeth too. I can make anything I want. Because I'm a true modeler. I thought about going in the prosthetic business, make carbon fiber limbs and stuff. Bionic arms and crap like that. And I'll guarantee if I if I had it, if I had an arm missing, I would have a prosthetic made by me. And it'd work. I made Shorty Bob's prosthetics. But that was 30 years ago. Built him a trike that he only had, he had no legs and one arm. And I built him a Volkswagen trike that he could ride. Thirty years ago. And prosthetic legs that he could walk get around on. They weren't pretty, but they worked. And that's all he cared about. You have to have the confidence in yourself to do whatever it takes to make it work. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. But I'm not building these airplanes. I mean, I, I, I don't know how much you know about my channel, but you know, there's there's an airplane from last year. There's the airplane from several years ago. There's an airplane from last year. There's airplanes hanging on the in the kitchen wall and sitting on the kitchen floor and I got one on the bench right there. I can spit them out faster <laughs> if you just sit down and do the job. You know, I, I would be forever figuring out that CAD shit. And you go to St. Louis, I got three times as many as I do here. When you don't crash, they tend to build up <laughs> big time. Okay, we got all the ribs cut for this thing. I'm not going to put it together tonight. But... 
you kind of get the idea. I'm going to put the spar in the top so we just hold them in place. And all this stuff, there shouldn't be any filing, fitting, or anything. It should just go together. We'll have to get them straightened up, you know, get them oriented, but... Get in there. It looks like I gotta. There's one. There we are. Gotta get him in the right spot. And this this type of construction yields a perfect wing every time. It's dead nut straight. Well, thank you. Light, straight, and rigid. That's the most important thing. Light, that's the first thing. Straight is the second thing. And rigid is the third thing. And in alignment, you can't have things going Cattywampus. Everything's got to be in alignment. The only discernment that I use is I use a, a sprint car adage of stagger and pitch and wedge. Hey, no problem. Uh, where I use three degrees of motor offset, and I always use a, a symmetry in the wing. The inboard wing is normally three quarters of an inch to an inch longer than the outboard that that gives you uh, let you use less tip weight i know that sounds kind of antithetical to it so you know the exact opposite polar polar opposite of what it is but if you have more asymmetry you have less tip weight because it creates lift and all you're trying to do we have a problem here. I sanded those too short. No big deal, it's only wood. We'll put a piece of 16th on it. And sand it back. Top and bottom. Yeah. Because that is down and that is down. And this is sloppy. Yeah. Uh, I just glue it on there and sand it to shape. Hopefully that's enough. I watch all kinds of things on YouTube. You know, the Jap I'm watching uh, railroad guys build dioramas now. That one guy's really good. Last night I was watching uh, a scale modeler build plastic airplanes. Yep, that's exactly what it needed. It needed that and one on this side. Let's see here. There. Right there. He was building a Spitfire. Then he was talking about it. F5F Bearcat, and I got a Bearcat from Al Raid. A kit. I, I don't like building kits, though. It's a short kit. Walter Ullman short kit, so it's really not a kit. It's just the rib set. But the problem with that airplane is it takes up so much space putting it together because you can't take it off the jig. This I can go, well, I'm done and put it behind the couch or something until I'm ready to put it together. 
but a raid bearcat gonna have to sit on the in the jig for ever how long it takes me to put it together and seeing as I've never built one that could be a while okay that's half is too much what do we got here I'm just using my eyeball engineering here Take a couple thousand for it, two thousand. It's got unobtainium stuff in it. The drivetrain's a thousand bucks. There we go, that fits perfect now. Perfecto. Okay, so I'm not going to pin it together tonight. We got one minute left. I mean, it's real close to finish. All it needs is finish inking and put some clear on it. All the markings are on it. You know, I gotta put the weathering on it, and I, I don't know. I just lost interest in it. I shouldn't have, shouldn't have built it. Well, thanks, Yogi. That's what you always say. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me this evening. We'll be on tomorrow night again, same time, doing the same thing. I think tomorrow night we'll glue the sheeting together and get it ready to go on so that I got at least I have one half of the wing done. I, I can't take this out of the bucket because it's not glued together, but I'll guarantee this is like an ounce and a half, all this business here, about an ounce and a half. And to get the sheeting on, it'll be two and a half ounces. And the whole wing, less the bell crank and the flaps, will be five ounces. And that's that's where it needs to be. Of course, then you start adding this block and that block, and then it, it builds up weight quick. It'll be ten ounces before it goes in the airplane. All right. Thanks for watching. Fairwinds Tight Lines. See you tomorrow, 7 o'clock. See ya.